today we're going to look at the basics of a Chet Atkins style arrangement. The one that I that I work on the most is Mr. Sandman, pretty famous one that he did. And it's his classic approach of having a bass line in quarter notes, an alternating bass, a country style bass in quarter notes played with a thumb pick while he plays uh, melodic work with the fingers up above it. So I'm not going to get into the details of that tune, so I'm not going to be teaching that tune in its entirety at all. What I'm going to do is try to get you prepared for playing such a piece. It might be that one or another one of your choosing. So uh, I have an image of, well, a, you know, a handwritten example sheet of four or five examples that I'll be playing from, and you can download that from, from my website. I'll, I'll put that up there. So hopefully that'll be useful to you. So I'm going to start off with some some really simple examples that are uh, I think useful to the to the person who's new to Chet Atkins style. First of all, get yourself a thumb pick. Uh, this is a kind of a typical design. It's not the one I usually use, but it fits comfortable enough. It'll stick out of the side of your thumb. Notice the orientation. I see people put them on in funny ways sometimes. So that's the way that goes on there. And uh, the basic technique involves a palm mute. He'll palm mute at the bridge so the bass is punctuated and a bit dry. While, if you can sneak a look in there, there's space on the, on the pinky side of the hand. That lets the open, uh, well not just the open, but the, uh, the higher strings to ring out. So you'll hear a muted bass, contrasted by ringing uh, melody notes and inner voices. So that's crucial. Exercise one on this sheet shows how Chet would play uh, an E chord, or a, I should say a six string root chord, any chord that involves the low E as the, as the root. And he'll do this uh, by alternating between the low E string and the D string, the low E and the D. Quite simply, if we played an E chord, you'd be going from low E to an E octave on the D string. Six, four, six, four, like that. That's example one. Practice it a lot. Get used to that. That has to be perfectly steady and natural. So you're working on tone quality of getting a muted bass and some evenness to it. Pardon that last note. Uh, the next thing you're gonna need to do is get uh, the fifth string root uh, bass line happening. This one's a little bit more intricate in that it goes from the fifth string to the fourth string to the sixth string to the fourth string. So in the case of, let's say, an open A chord, you do an open A, the E on the D string, the low E, back to the E on the D string. So you have root fifth, 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 all with the palm mute. Again, practice this one a lot. You need to get these things second nature because we're gonna be adding finger work on top of that. So to say you need to be comfortable with these is really an understatement. The next thing you can do is shown in example three. And you can finger a full chord and start to get used to playing notes with the uh, fingers. In this case, I'm going to finger an E chord and I'm going to use my index finger to play the G string note and my middle finger to play the B string note. And I'm simply going to play quarter notes. If that's new to you, you can start there before you even add a bass. But basically, we're going to combine example one with this idea. So you're going to have the alternating bass, the muted alternating bass in combination with those upper notes. Listening for clarity on both parts, a muted bass and ringing upper notes. You could do the same exact thing I didn't write it out, but you could do the same thing with example two. You could finger an A chord, 
play the G and B strings with what's already fingered and have the alternating bass. In terms of the, the right hand, which is what we're really focusing on, those patterns are directly applicable to uh, what Chet plays in, in Sandman. There are a number of measures that will use uh, that exact pattern, but it is also the easiest pattern. So there's not much of uh, independence between the, the, uh, the roll of the thumb and the fingers. You know, they're basically playing the same rhythm. We have to have that first before we can play divergent ideas. So what I thought we might do next is look at specific measures from Sandman. So I chose what might be the easiest two measures. Uh, they're from different parts of the tune. Example five shows when he plays an F sharp seven with a flat 13. So uh, he'll play it with his thumb. You'll see it in the tab, but I don't want to go, go get into the fingerings of it. I just want to get into the nitty gritty. It's a six string root, so it's second fret of the E and D strings, alternating bass. Well, again, we have the uh, the index and middle playing above that. And he does a walking bass. You don't have to do the walking bass yet. That's not your focus yet. You can just keep the regular bass going. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. that chord sounds kind of weird in isolation it's kind of dissonant and but that's uh i don't know it's about measure four or five or six something like that from from the tune the other uh chord that you might want to take a look at is when he gets to the f7 this is toward the end of the a section and this is it looks like he'll actually finger something that looks like an f9 chord like a friendly old f9 chord and his his middle finger will go from the root to the fifth, the root to the fifth. So this bass line, again, it's like what we did on the A chord earlier. In example six, we're gonna go from the fifth string to the fourth, to the sixth, to the fourth. Notice my middle finger moving in the chord voicing. This one has a little bit more of an independence with the uh, other fingers. We're gonna go for half notes in the melody. So you'll have something like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Notice I put in a second measure that just has the bass line running. It gives you a chance to kind of regroup and think about what's going on with the exercise. So the first measure is really the uh, exact thing from the transcription from, from the real music. So this is where he has uh, the music like this. Sorry. Or one, two, three, four. You can coast. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I think that might be helpful if you start with those exercises and really take your time. You know, we covered this in under 10 minutes. Expect this to take quite a while. I, I know it did for me. I'm a mere mortal and it, it took quite some time to get some comfort on these on these phrase on these figures. So, you know, maybe one a day, maybe maybe one a week. I don't know. Uh, be patient and enjoy the ride. So there you go with some Chet Atkins. I'll be happy to help you with more of this and get into the nitty gritty of the real piece itself and uh, have fun with your, with your alternate bass patterns and chord melody things. All right, have a great day, everybody.